Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about maximum likelihood estimators. Our previous video, that's right up here, introduced the idea of likelihood. So if you haven't caught that video, you might want to check it out before you take a look at this maximum likelihood estimator video. The maximum likelihood estimator, sometimes called the MLE, provides a statistical methodology for finding uh, estimators for any particular statistical model. Right? And so therefore it performs, it provides the first general approach that we have to finding estimators. The definition of the maximum likelihood estimator, here denoted by a theta hat with a subscript MLE, is the parameter value for theta that maximizes the likelihood function, which is why you might have wanted to catch that video about likelihood functions uh, before. That so written mathematically, here we have on the right side the argument max of the likelihood function, right? So what that arg max means is it says find and try all the different values for theta and find the one value for theta that maximizes that likelihood and then return it, right? So that's why we have on the left side that theta hat MLE. Um, when the data are discrete, you can explicitly think about this value of the, that is the MLE, maximizes the probability of the data that you've observed. If you have continuous random variables, then you actually maximize the density and not the probability because we have that whole issue that continuous random variables have a probability of being of zero, of being any particular value. Okay, so if we take a look at our binomial model and we talk about trying to find the MLE, one way to find the MLE is to take derivatives. And so on this side, we're going to talk about the derivation that you would use to find the derivatives of this likelihood function with respect to theta. Now, almost invariably when we're doing the math or we're using computation to find MLEs, we're always actually going to be using the log likelihood function. And that works, that is, if you find the maximum of the log likelihood, it will also maximize the likelihood because the log is a monotonic function. Right? That is, if you put in a bigger value in the log, you will get the log of that bigger value is bigger than the previous value. And so we'll find the maximum, the log likelihood, uh, with respect to zero. We're going to set it equal to zero, and we're going to solve it. Because if you remember, right, what that means is that the, right, remember that the derivative is the slope of this function. Right? And at the peak of this likelihood, that slope is going to be zero. Okay, and so that's why we're taking derivatives, setting it equal to zero, and then solving. All right, so here's an example of using the log likelihood for the binomial. There it is. We're going to take derivatives with respect to theta. Uh, if you take those derivatives, you get these values. You set that equal to zero, and then you solve for theta. And if you do so, you find that the MLE for a binomial model is just y over n. That is the number of successes divided by the number of attempts. This is probably, if you had thought about it ahead of time, is probably the estimator that you would have suggested for the probability of success. All right, now you should take one more step here and you should verify that the second derivative uh, is in fact negative to make sure that there's a maximum as opposed to a minimum, but it is. If we want to take a look at this picture, this is what we have. So this is our example binomial probability, uh, sorry, binomial likelihood. All right, that's that solid black line. This one happens to be for the three successes uh, out of 10 attempts. This, right, the likelihood is the place on that curve that is the maximum. So that is the highest point, and I've now drawn a red line at that maximum point. When you have three successes out of 10 attempts, that highest point is going to be 0.3, which is exactly where it is on this picture. So that's one way to find MLEs. I mean, two ways, really. There's the graphical approach, where you can at least get close, and there's the taking derivatives approach as well. I'm going to provide a third way for those of you who are not so mathematically inclined, uh, but this is to use a computer to solve and find that maximum for us. And so here we're going to be using uh, R to do the calculations. Uh, the top couple of lines define that log likelihood in the R syntax. So we have d binom, that's the probability mass function for our binomial distribution. But now we have the parameter of that distribution is theta. So theta, that probability of success, that's what we don't know. Notice we're using the log equals true argument. That ensures that we're using the log likelihood, which is just uh, numerically more stable than the likelihood, which is why we use the log. 
The second set of uh, lines there is using the optim function. The optim function is a function at R that can find either minima or maxima. The last argument there where we do the control list uh, fn scale equals negative one. I don't know why they're calling it this, uh, but that just ensures that you maximize. Technically what it does is it multiplies the function by negative one and then minimizes it, but because that would turn a minimum into a maximum, the negative one works there. The other lines here indicate, number one, uh, that 0.5 indicates our starting value in this optimization. We're going to optimize that log likelihood. We're using this particular method. The reason we're using that method is because we can set bounds. Since we know that a probability has to be between 0 and 1, we set those bounds. Uh, I give it a little buffer room between uh, 0 and 1 just to make sure we don't have any numerical issues. When we run that, uh, it's always good to check and make sure that we've converged. So that's that convergence line. Uh, zero means that we have converged. Zero is really an indication of no error. The next line down is the parameter value. So you can see that the estimate here of that parameter was 0.3 approximately. Right? To numerical accuracy, that is that 0.3 MLE that we derived a couple of slides ago. The last line here, in cases of interest, is the actual value of the likelihood at that parameter value of 0.3. All right, so that's a third way of finding these uh, MLEs, is using the computer to do it numerically. In more complex models, this is definitely how you want to do it. In even more complex models, you might need to get smarter about it than this. Okay, so uh, let's move on to our normal model. Uh, I didn't put any pauses in here. Maybe I should have before I put up all the math on the slide there. Uh, as a reminder, we're thinking about having independent normal random variables with a common mean mu and a common variance sigma squared. Uh, all the math there is showing you the math behind it, finding the likelihood, finding the log likelihood, taking derivatives, setting them equal to zero, and it, finally finding the values for mu and sigma squared that maximize that likelihood. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps here. You could pause the video. Better yet, you could take a look at the slides that are in a PDF down below. But the end result is that the MLE for a normal model for the mean mu is the average of the observations y bar. And the MLE for the variance uh, is this sum of the observations minus the mean squared divided by n. If you think back to our sample variance, that was a few videos ago, maybe I'll remember to put a uh, link up top here. The sample variance had a 1 over n minus 1 term. So just a little bit of a discrepancy there between the sample variance and the MLE. When n is large, of course, that makes no difference at all. All right, so take, let's take a look graphically at this MLE. Okay, before we get to graphically, apparently we did the numerical maximization first. So this is the same process as we went through before. Uh, this time, the very first line there, I showed you the data. So these are the three data points we're using to construct this log likelihood. We still used optim. Uh, here, we did a slight uh, difference when we constructed the log likelihood. You'll notice that theta 2 gets exponentiated, and that's how we calculate the sigma squared. And we do that so that we can optimize over the whole real line for the variance, right? So instead of optimizing the variance, we're optimizing the log variance. That's why down here, when we take the parameter value, we have to uh, square it and then exponentiate, or sorry, exponentiate and then square it. The exponential will get us the standard deviation, squaring it will get us the variance. And we find that it's maximized, or the MLE is about 0.3 and about 1. Now, on the previous slide, we had another way to calculate it using the sample variance and sample mean. And so we just compare that result, which is more exact, let's say, to the uh, numerically derived MLE. But we can see up to at least three, three decimal places, we get exactly the same answer. All right, now let's take a look at the picture. Right, this is that likelihood we saw on the previous video. Right, again, the likelihood is low where the color is dark blue, uh, and it's high where we have that sort of bright yellow color. The X is the MLE that we found on the previous slide. Right, so that MLE is the highest point of the likelihood. Right, right there, smack dab in the center of where this likelihood is the highest. All right, so that was a couple examples of MLEs, one for binomial and one for normal. As an overall summary of these three videos, we introduced this idea of a joint probability mass and density function. And in particular, when we have independent random variables, 
then we just have the product of the marginal probability density or mass function. We introduced in the previous video the idea of a likelihood, and the likelihood provides us relatively which values of parameters are important. And in this video, we introduced the idea of an MLE, the maximum likelihood estimator, as the value that maximizes that likelihood. All right, uh, in our next set of videos, we will continue on talking about statistical inference. In particular, we will talk about a Bayesian approach to parameter estimation. Hope to get you there.